Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to the Best Practice Show. My name is Kirk Barron, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over. And so I'm hoping you guys have had a great year in 2021. You're looking at 2022, thinking to yourself, man, how's this going to be better? I hope it's going to be better. And today I interview my good friend, dear mentor, Dr. John Cranham. And you're going to see why he's a good friend and a dear mentor, because everything he shared with me, he's pulled me aside and said, here, come here, kid. Like you need to know what's going on here and a couple of things you need to be thinking about. So he's the perfect person for this subject. I know you're going to enjoy this episode. He's going to talk about how you create these big, hairy, audacious goals and the steps that you take and how you don't subject yourself to outside pressures. And uh, it's a great one. So uh, make sure you listen to that, enjoy it, and use it positively to influence people around you. And if you're thinking, how the heck do I ensure next year is going to be a great year? Come hang out with us at Act Dental. Whether it be in the pro coaching format, if you're a serious student, we'll send one of our best coaches out there to your practice and help you improve it so that you enjoy going to work. How about that? Or if you just want to be in a group of people that think the same way that you do, that want a better practice and a better life, join us in Inner Circle where we get together with some of the best thinkers in all of dentistry and I'm warning you, it will freak you out because it's not what they do. It's how they think that's so valuable. And I'm not even close. Well, first of all, I'm not very smart, but I'm not even close to being the smartest person in the room. It's inner circle. And we're all getting together in person on January 21st. You do not want to miss this. So make sure you check it out at Act Dental. So hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll see you soon. Hey guys, we're just going to roll because that's how we roll when we roll. And so uh, thanks for tuning in to the Best Practices Show podcast. I got a little frog in my throat. I don't know what the deal is, but I'm going to let John do most of the talking today. But I'm so excited you guys are here. Now, I'm going to just call you guys out because actually I'm not calling you out because I don't even know how it works. Um, we've been doing all these videos and you guys don't even watch the videos, but you listen to the audios and all I can say is thank you. And uh I'm just absolutely loving this. Now, if you've been with us at any portion, any point, anywhere, anytime, you've seen this guy. And I like to tell the story, a little bit of the story, and today we're going to be talking about one of the things that we want you to do or consider is the importance of goals and what a BHAG is. And, you know, I've shared some BHAGs with John and John Cranham, who's become a dear friend of mine and a dear mentor of mine. Um... We're going to talk about that because if anything, I think both of us want the same thing for you, which is a great 2022 and it's better than what 2021 was. Now let's go right into it. But John, I want people to know who the heck you are because I got a lot of dental students now listening. Who the heck is John Cranham? Like, who are you? Where do you practice? What do you do first? Yeah. So I'm a 60 year old dude now, which is kind of crazy. Definitely midway through the back nine of life as you as yeah, you say, yeah. but been, dentist, been a dentist a long time. Uh, but I'm a husband and father first. I got three great kids. Um, one is a also a young dentist who's just started practicing me a little over a year ago. Um, been involved in CE for about 25 years. I think I've about 1600 done about 1600 days of CE I've taught during that time. I uh, was the clinical director of the Dawson Academy from 2007 until 2020, and uh, was honored by the clinical emerit or clinical director emeritus award uh, they gave me this year, and so still a lot of love in my heart uh, for that organization. But uh, with my daughter coming into practice with me, I just I needed to get off the road and spend a little more time in my office and with my most important student. And, uh, and the other thing I've really gotten into, and we'll talk about this a little bit later but just completely transform my practice in the last three years into 100% digital workflows. And, you know, I was a 
stone and articulator guy my whole career and so you know been mired in virtual articulation and digital wax ups and what's really been fun for me this last year was I created a group called uh, Cranham Clinical Coaching and uh, I've been coaching 35 doctors into this transition of bringing virtual articulation into the, into the office and so that was so fun uh, I'm partnering up with Lee Culp this year and we're starting another entity and kind of taking it up a notch. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, yeah so a daddy, a dentist, an educator, an author, a lot of things. Yeah, and, and at some point we're going to talk about the Cornell effect with your amazing son, and I want to incorporate all that. And I, I think it's really important to talk about the why. You know, John, you are an important, still are, and still always have been an important mentor of mine. So I'm just telling you guys, you got to see this guy speak. You always help me understand, like, the mind, the heart, the hands of a dentist and what's really going on inside your mind when you're looking at some of these things and you also dispel a lot of the rumors you're like anybody that tells you they're working on full mouth cases all the time oh come on like you can only manage like eight really important things at one time and you don't really want so you've really created a reality for me you know and i mean there's so many cranisms that i use like aerobic anaerobic <laughs> and like i we I, we, could, we actually have to do an episode on cranisms cranum 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 i didn't even know that was a that's a thing that's hey like i like making stuff up on the fly here but um <laughs> No, um, and then the first time I met you, Traverse City, uh, Michigan, which some of you guys heard that story, I just stalked him. And the important thing, I think the one lesson here is, is that I would just throw in the room right away is you don't find, you know, mentors don't find you, you find them. I stalked the crap out of you and probably scared you a little bit and told you that we were going to be friends. And you were like, I'll be the judge of that. And <laughs> we had similar stories and similar paths. And one of them was the Iron Man, but that's not really, we're not talking about the Iron Man. We're talking about big goals. So what would you say about this topic, BHAGs, before we get into the details. What's what's important about setting goals? Well, to me, you know, the big hag, BHAG, for those that you don't know, big, hairy, audacious goals. Um, for my my whole life, you know, whether it was the Iron Man or whether it was, you know, getting a chance to te teach with Pete Dawson or, or finish my book or, you know, the things that the biggest things in my my life that were important to me from a professional standpoint started with a idea that got me excited, that seemed impossible, almost seemed like I couldn't do it. And, and I think that's one of the things is that if, if you can think of something that really excites you and it seems impossible, but there's a sliver of chance that you might be able to do it, there's something about that that sort of ejects you out of bed in the morning. And so I, I, for me, and everybody's wired a little bit different, but I, but I do think extremely successful people, people that have, I, I admired, you know, Pete Dawson, for instance, you know, he, he died two years ago. And, you know, I remember be, being with him at my lake house two weeks before he passed away. And he, he was talking about things that, I mean, he never didn't have something that, that he was a BHAG that he was working on. And he was showing me, you know, it was this book layout that he was, he was working on. And so I think that if you don't have that, if you don't have that goal, that thing that's exciting you, um, then it's really easy to just start to get caught into the day-to-day -day routine. Mm -hmm. And I can think about times in my life when dentistry became mundane or my life started to become a little, um, not boring, but less fulfilling. And I'll tell you one of the most amazing times was uh, right after I got asked to be, to teach with Dr. Dawson. And I was on the, on the, um, you know, the faculty before I was clinical director, but I was all of a sudden teaching there. And I went through this like six month period of time that I didn't really understand what was going on, but I was a little bit depressed and was kind of going through the motions and didn't really know what's going on. So I, one night at dinner, I talked to Pete about it. I see I'm struggling a little bit. And, and he goes, so we talked about it for about five minutes. And he goes, well, sounds like you need another goal. And I said, it just hit me in a ton of bricks as I had this BHAG of becoming an educator and maybe someday getting a chance to teach with Pete Dawson. And then it happened. And, you know, what really struck me is it's not as much about attaining the goal as it, much as it is chasing it and right. and using it for inspiration and i think that's really important because even if you don't quite 
complete everything that you might have visualized in that BHAG, you still end up in a completely different place that's yeah. going to be better. Yeah. And so I think it's really important. I, I do it every year and I kind of think about one, five and 10 year goals um, and to have something that I'm excited about. And I just know like right, right now with what I'm doing with Lee, I'm having a hard time sleeping at night. It's so exciting about what we're doing now. So yeah. it's just really cool. I love it. And you know, um, a lot of people call it different things. I've heard it called a future poll, like something to look forward to. And then you got embraced into, or you embraced the whole Ironman, um, you know, marathon journey. If you ever done that, I'm terrible at all three disciplines, but I remember my coach saying, no, 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 the reward is the race. You know, the benefit yeah. is, you know, the training is what you got to embrace because the, the race, when you do it, that's the fun part, you know? And I think what you're saying is exactly true. You got to, you got to convince yourself to get out of bed. And some of you that are listening, you're in dental school right now. And you know, I just got to get through this. I got to somehow get through this. And you know there's rewards once you get through and can prove to yourself you can get through this obstacle, right? And I, I think it just layers a little bit of confidence. Is that how your goals got bigger? Is like, you're like, okay, I did this one. Maybe yeah, and, and, and I, the thing that I struggled with, Kirk, was, you know, I was pretty good at the BHAG, but, you know, one of the, one of the, the second thing kind of below the BHAG is, is those, like, attainable stepping stones. Sometimes you can see crystal clear where you want to go. Like, I can vividly remember hearing Pete Dawson for the first time in 1989. I drove my little car down to St. Pete and heard him, and I was so excited when I finished the class on on uh, noon on Saturday, I drove all the way back to Portsmouth, Virginia. I got home like four in the morning and I drove to my office to start working on stuff. This little crummy 800 square foot office that I just bought that, you know, I think the doctor had done like four crowns the entire year. It was just a big filling, silver filling practice. But there was a lot of opportunity there. Um, and then I can remember just being like depressed because I could see where I wanted to go. Like I, I knew the kind of practice I wanted to have, but I had no idea what to work on Tuesday or Monday mm -hmm. to start the process. And so I, I do think having, like you say, those little attainable stepping stones that are, that are working in the direction of where you want to go. And, and that's where like in dentistry, you know, finding a mentor, finding, uh, people that are getting similar results in your community or or even outside your community that and that's where today I think with social media it's easier back then there wasn't even the internet yet I know it's hard to believe but I mean dentistry I always used to say the loneliest place in the world was a dental office after a Pete Dawson class I just felt completely by myself and I do think now there's lots of ways to connect with people that can sometimes give you those little little steps and yeah. and and so the iron man was a great example because i had done a lot of triathlons as a, you know a teenager and in dental school and then i got this idea at 39 to do it and i went to a store called final kick in virginia beach and met a guy uh named jerry frostick they own JNA Racing in Virginia Beach now and run a lot and, and and do a lot of the races here or run a lot of the races here. But he had coached like 160 people to successfully complete the Ironman. And, and you know, I knew within like two minutes of talking to this dude that this was gonna be a friend of mine, that I was gonna so I started, you know, with little runs on Saturday and then the runs got longer, and then he just sat down and wrote this plan for me and just laid it out, just say, but then, then to your point, the work the, the work then really begins because you don't wake up one morning and swim 2.4 miles, ride 112 miles, and run a marathon without some, some context of getting up every way. Any sort of BHAG, um, that is the key. That is the key element is... Shoot, I lost you, man. All right, we're still rolling. Hey, buddy. Hold on. What happened? I'm not sure what happened there. Hold on. Let me just add you here. All right, so you there? Can yeah. You hear me now? Yeah, something. Are you on Wi-Fi? 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's okay. So I'm still rolling. Nothing has changed. My post guys are amazing. So okay. like, right. they will, they'll make this look like we were in the same room. Don't even like swear. butter. Like butter. So, um, you know, you went back to like all these little things that add up to, and then you cut out. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think that there's always going to be somebody there. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, brilliant people will find their own path, yeah. but, but again, if you can find a coach that can give you a path, but then it's ultimately up to you to get up every day and to follow that path and learn from it and tweak it along the way. Um, yeah. Now take us you know, into this though. You're 60. It's December in 2021 like give me an idea what you're doing right now you use you sent me a text this morning you're like okay the yearly review and then stepping you know set attainable what are you doing right now like tell me i mean we don't you don't have to share all the details but give us a give us an idea yeah, of what's so, inside so I, I i start kind of like mid-november okay i start kind of thinking about what's happened and and i might have the big picture of um of, of things that I've, I, I see out there that's kind of beyond this year. Mm -hmm. um, but, but a lot of times, most of my BHAGs are attached to what I want to accomplish this year. And so I start just sort of thinking about it. And then I always block the first Monday after Christmas, where I sit down with a big pad of paper, and that's where I've kind of thought about it, chewed about it, and that's where it all comes down. And and I sort of break it out into some physical goals, things that I want to do. You know, it used to be a little more inspiring when I was younger, but now there's kind of a, a weight that I want to hit. Uh, there might be a couple of activities that I want to be able to do. It might be a golf score, but there's some of that. Certainly some financial goals. I think a lot about that. Um, and now, believe it or not, a lot of my goal setting has to do with more time off. You know, I'm at that yeah. point where blocking more what Pete called uh, blue time, you know, more time at the lake. I probably, one of my goals this year is by June, I want to go to three days a week and just work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And we're going to bring in another doctor, one of Caitlin's friends to be with her. We're building a new office right now. So that's really exciting. Um, but <clears throat> so, but I, but I do think that sometimes I don't think people spend enough time thinking about it. Like they just take themselves to once lunch one day and then just write some things down. I, I'm taking a good month, just kind of when I'm driving, anytime I got a minute, I'm exercising, I'm sort of thinking about what I want to do. And then I pay attention to what, um, what makes me feel excited, you right. know? And, and again, I think that's one of the real keys about BHAGs and for me, the best ones are are usually going to be things that make me feel like I'm making a difference, like that that that's going to be benefiting the people and other people on the planet. And if there's some financial reward as well doing that, that's good too, because yeah. they kind of it's kind of got to fuel both of those things if it's going to be a business thing. Now, if it's completely if it's a BHAG that's completely um, related to giving back, that's something else altogether. And, and I usually have a little bit of that in there too, about things that Kim and I may want to do together. That is just, um, you know, charity or something along those lines too. Yeah. But I, but I do think it's really a fun way to finish the year, celebrate a little bit about what you've, what you've done and, you know, maybe examine a couple things that fell short and learn from that. We don't always attain all our goals. That's okay. Mm -hmm. and uh, move forward. I do want to say that um, I think one of the really critical things about this, and you may comment on this too, but really successful people, um, they have the ability to create daily behaviors that direct themselves towards these goals, these stepping stones. And I, and I remember that, you know, one of the absolute simplest, most thing that I have ever saw in Pete Dawson every day got up, and he would go to his desk and he would get a three by five card. Do you know this? Did yeah. you ever know this? Oh yeah. yeah. He'd get a three by five card and he'd sit there for about 15 or 20 minutes and he would write six things that, and it wasn't, it wasn't a to-do list. It wasn't like pick up the laundry. It was six things that would direct him towards these long-term BHAGs that he had. And, you know, I can, tell you, I mean, here he was, you know, on oxygen, 
at the end of his life, showing up with our lake house, and I'll just never forget it because I look in his, you know, he's showing up and he's having to help him out and he's, you know, walker and the whole thing. And I look in his top little pocket there, you can, his little two, three by five card is sticking out of his dang pocket. And That's he did so it his awesome. whole life. Yeah. And, you know, we don't need any three by five cards, but we've got phones, we've got all these different ways. But the point is, um, having a system in place where you're thinking about it every day, because especially in dentistry, there's just so much coming at us all the time that unless we carve the time to, to, to work towards some of these things, um, all we hear is the noise. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, you brought up a couple of things. Is number one, breaking up into sustainable small stepping stones. We do this. Um, number, you know, I've heard this so many times. People often plan their vacations more than they yeah. plan their own lives and their businesses. And I think that's absolutely true. And so we always sit down as a company, do a strategic plan. We have a three-year plan and a one-year plan. I think the important one for us is the 90-day plan. So we can get our brains around 13 weeks of discipline. So we just take all these things and we focus on three to five priorities and three to five KPIs. And you know how this works. You make them a little bit better. Every human being can get around 13 weeks. You get into five months, that's a long time. But three months, I can stay focused on one thing that might help us automatically. That's a system. Uh, the other thing is just time allocation. One of my coaches on Tuesday, she does this with her team and I love it. They set goals and then she says, show me where it's scheduled. And I'm like, what? Yeah. She's like, I want to see this goal and how it relates to your time, which is the same thing that your coach did with you. It's like, you're going to do your long runs on Saturdays or Sundays and you put them in. I think that's the important piece because they're going to be goals that you don't make, John, and you, you learn from them and you go, okay, I realize not to let them deflate you. But I think a lot of times dentists just get into this busy thing and then they do set reasonable goals. And then one more thing, I don't even know if there's a question in here. I like the idea of creating a goal that matters. Like if I do this, what's, in, what's its impact on others, the rest of the people around me? So those are considerations, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I do think that if it's, you know, I mean, we all have, this is really aimed at some of the dental students, but you know, when you're at that point in life, all you maybe are thinking about with your goals is just having an income. Right. I mean, right. And not and, and start working on your dad and, you know, it'd be nice to be able to not stress if you go to dinner or something like that. I mean, you want some kind of basic things. You you're looking forward to the rewards of being a dentist. <clears throat> but it's really important to remember is that that's going to happen. I mean, right. you work a little bit. Even average dentists have pretty good lives. But to be really joyous in life. And this is something that is one of the themes in the book that I wrote about my son that I learned from him was that, you know, he had all these physical things going on and he was going through them as a really young little boy. And it, it, it occurred to me when he was about two or three years and we almost lost him and he fought so hard to stay alive that even through all that, he was so freaking happy. And I started to realize that he was so happy because he was just giving a hundred percent. And and when, when things were, bad around him, like when he was through some of the bad stuff and he had a moment to feel somewhat normal, he was just so joyous because the contrast between what he was feeling and what he was, how he was like now is just better. Yeah. And I think one of the things to really remember as a dentist, and it's that old book, you know, good can become the enemy of great. You can be doing good enough that you are kind of like an 80, 75, 85 percenter and you're taking reasonable care of your patients and you're making reasonable crowns and you're, you know, usual and customary and all that stuff. But I think the joy in any of us is when we're given our best. And, and, um, and as part of that best, we have the feeling that we're helping other people and making the world a little bit better. And I, I, that's just been my thing. And, and, I, and I, if I, if I am ever in a position where I am not having that anymore, then we're going to create another BHAG to get my finger finger back into that pot yeah. that's me so i again for the young dentist out there listening um just remember the success will come but keep striving to do better yeah i think you dropped a very important note and you can't just give you know you gave us a little a little smidgen but go back to that when you say good can become the enemy of the great like take let's say i'm a 34 year old dentist listen to this what does that mean to me, John? Like, go a little bit deeper, because that's really important, what you just said. 
Well, you know, what I mean by that is, is that it's very easy for a dentist to start practicing dentistry. And as your speed comes up, you're going to be able to do enough dentistry to make a pretty darn good living, way above uh, the, the average. And what, we're just, what I'm just saying is if that's good, if that's a good dentist and all you want out of the profession is to take care financially of your, pa your, your, your patients, by the time you're 45 or maybe 55, the culture of that may not be enough. Right. I, I find that the the culture of what I've been able to do in dentistry is constantly reinvent myself to make me feel like I'm getting better. People I say, dude, you're 60. Why you've been using articulators your whole life? Why are you reinventing your whole practice to be digital? And I say, you know why? Because it's awesome. That's why it's, awesome. it's freaking awesome. It's fun, yeah. and the staff, the staff, my staff knows that if I get something working pretty darn well, I'm going to find a way to make it even better tomorrow. Yeah. And, and so I know that sounds kind of cliche or whatever, but one of the greatest things about this profession is to always strive to be great. I don't think I'm there yet. I don't think I'm great. I don't think I'm there yet, but it's the striving part and the working at it and, and, and seeing things improve that makes it, so fun and rewarding. I love. Uh, it. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember having it. Our twenty fifth. Um, this is. I. I probably shouldn't tell the story, but what the hell? I'm Go for it. But I was at my twenty fifth dental school reunion, and we were all around the table and with all my buddies. And there was this one guy over there that um, was sitting, and he was talking about how he thought we had such a great education at Virginia Commonwealth University, which we did back in the eighties, and. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I was sitting there thinking about it that I, I remember I really hadn't seen him anywhere. Like I hadn't seen him in any meetings or anything. And, and, and he goes on, he goes, you know, and I was thinking about it. I really don't do anything different than what they taught me at VCU in 1988. And I'm sitting there thinking, I can't think of anything that I do the same. Like, I can't even think of anything that I do the same. Even taking out teeth is different because I use a laser to cut the PDLs and stuff. So it's, you know, I'm sure he's happy and, you know, whatever. But but I just think the, the d people in this profession that I admire and I think are getting the most joy out of it are the ones that um, continues to strive to be better. Yeah, and that's one of the things that Pete said to me at the age of 24. I said, Dr. Dawson, is there one thing you could tell me about this great profession? He goes, hmm, never tell yourself you have it all figured out. I, I mean, even at my age. Now, he was exactly, so I was 24, he was 64. And so he was like, I, you know, you're going to find, Kirk, the people that have it all figured out, they're not that much fun. And I'm always learning from younger dentists, and that's, that's the mold you're cut from and all that. Now, some of the things that you mentioned, and you, you've said this, like the external pressures to goals. You said, don't let the cultural timelines pressure you. What, the, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, it's the old adage that, that comparison is the enemy of contentment. Right. You know, and, and it, as you... But I'll, again, aim maybe at the younger dentist. You're, you're going to go through this, and you have to remember that everybody's in different – so you know, all your buddies are going to be in different cities, different socioeconomic areas, different practices, different opportunities. Um, you all may have – you may go into this with sim similar goals, but there's going to be certain people that develop faster, have a different opportunity – um, you know, I can remember being very frustrated the first year or two in my little town of Portsmouth because there were people that were going through the classes, maybe a little bit older than me, that were just seemingly doing the kind of cases that I wanted to be doing and it wasn't happening yet. But, but what happened was when I finally, I don't know what clicked, whether it was my communication, but I kept at it, kept at it, kept at it. When, it, when the floodgates finally opened, there was so much opportunity in my own practice that it, it sort of took care of itself. But, but I, I can remember being very close in that first, you know, 18 months to two years to quitting, to not yeah. dentistry, but quitting trying to do that kind of dentistry. I just kind of thought that I was going to 
the, the whole drill, fill and bill, and just focus on insurance and not optimum care, I came very close to just thinking that it wasn't going to happen where I was at because it wasn't happening at the speed that I thought it should. And so I think that's a very important part is, and again, I, in, in the book about my son, I, that's one of my most, I marvel at him mm -hmm. um, with some of his learning disabilities. I mean, even still, I mean, he's in my practice and does a lot of my digital design work for me. And it's funny because sometimes I'll be wanting him to learn something faster than he's capable of learning it and he knows that Maybe. but he never gets too upset he just kind of he just kind of says uh dad i will get it i'm on cornell time right now you know? that's awesome and so he's just kind of letting me know that it's gonna take him a little longer but he'll get there and so i just think that when you set a BHAG, i think it's important to set a goal like you want to have a timeline but if you get to the end of the year and you haven't attained it then your next BHAG is simply going to be what you haven't accomplished yet is just going to be added on. It just it just extends into it, and and probably the BHAG will even change a little bit. You know, yeah. you might add to it or alter it slightly, but you're going to be in a different place regardless. And that's what I think is so important: is regardless of how long it takes, if you're working towards it, you're growing. I and agree. if you're growing, I think you're happy. You know, yeah. I think we're happy inside if you're focusing on the growth yeah i totally agree and i i often refer to this whole thing in life as a mountain without a top we're climbing and i've got a goal we might fall short of how far i want to go but once you get to the clearing with your team and you look back you're gonna go wow look how small our car is like we've come a long way let's enjoy this and what have we learned by getting this far and um you know it's okay i i like the idea of just I want to hit the goal, don't get me wrong, but progress is really important to our well-being. I think God designed us that we have to have progress. Um, so when you look at this year, I think also too, John, can you speak to this? Like you were important to me because you can't figure this stuff on your own. Like you got to be vulnerable with people that you trust and go, and you, there are so many times you go, come here, come here. You don't know what's going on here. But you, like one of these things, I'll share this story. You said to me, speaking doesn't go like this. Speaking goes like this. And you need to block off your summers. You, you know, you were kind of like, come here, a little hot shot. You think you're all that cool. Block off. I'm like, well, what do I, what do I say? Well, when they say, you, can you do a Saturday? You say, I can't. And they'll call you back on a Thursday. Well, Sure enough. They just say you're booked. It's I did. Booked. I, they, don't have to, they don't have to know that you're with your kids. You're well, just booked. I'm such an <laughs> idiot that I would have never. Now, if you wouldn't have told me that, I would have screwed up so many, oh, yeah. so many Saturdays. And what was so cool was what you said happened. And then there yeah. are other things that you've said to me that were just so important. I think, I think the point is this. You got to find people that you can open up to, be vulnerable about what you're trying to do. And they go, I've been where you're going. Beware. You know, like, and here's a couple things to learn. And, um, and they'll also tell you the truth. Yeah, about I, think, I think, I think, and I think the other thing too is, and you've always said this about me. I mean, I'm always, I just have never let, um, like what's happening in dentistry or life or people um, determine what I'm going to focus on. Right. Like I spend a lot of time on what's going to be best for me and my family and where I think I can make the biggest difference. And if that means that I'm gonna talk about both occlusion and cosmetic dentistry at the same time in the 1990s, you know, which was so funny, but that was kind of crazy back then, but it just made sense. And, you know, uh, bringing my practice and merging it with Heartland five years ago, that was looked at as crazy. It's worked out for me. Um, leaving, stepping away from the Dawson Academy shocked a lot of people, but, you know, the thing of it is, is you got to keep evolving and you have to understand that as you're going through this life, that th where you think you're going to be at 45, 55, 65, whatever, doesn't necessarily, it's just going to be where you are. And that's why I think you always have to review, okay, where am I? And is what I'm doing now working for me? Right. You know, two years ago, I when I was doing the same thing, I'm like, you know, in that year, I ch traveled to China twice, Japan twice, Taiwan. You know, I'd been all these international. When I would do that, I'd work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, get on a plane, fly, get there Friday night, lecture two 10-hour days, fly back and go to work Tuesday. 
And so you're work, you're lecturing literally like eight at you know eight at night till five or six in the morning our time. And you get so you know all of a sudden at sixty when COVID hit, I just gotten back from Poland, and I like slept for two weeks. The first two weeks of COVID, I, I didn't realize how much kind of cortisol was going through my system. COVID weirdly may have saved my life because I was just burning hot. And then it was like, I also had my daughter coming out of dental school and my vision was always, well, at 60, I'm going to stop dentistry and I'm just going to teach with the Dawson. Because that's what Pete Dawson did. Right. But Pete Dawson also had it where all the classes were coming to St. Pete where he lived. He wasn't flying all over the world. So it was completely different circumstances. So it's, it's so important because while that was absolutely the hardest decision of my life, I'm having more fun right now than I've ever had. Practicing with my daughter and my son and you know, doing this digital stuff and coaching people one-on-one, -on -one, it's just freaking awesome. And so yeah. I think that's attached to though, being really clear about what's going on inside of yourself and constantly reviewing that. Yeah. And as you constantly reviewing that, then you can start directing your, your, um, your energies because it's so easy to be get on this this treadmill and you just can't get off and yeah. i was kind of there i was kind of there i was getting crispy yeah and so uh, you always use crispy and i think of you in may <laughs> you call me in may and go are you crispy yet and i'm like what does that mean because i'm feeling i got this deep subjective pain i don't know what to call it and crispy is a good word i get to the airport and the person would go where are you going and i'd go Bruh -bruh -bruh. <laughs> and they go, where, where, where? Now, when I think of you and goals, like, uh, I think it's important. Like, you've always been a little crazy. Like, and you, it's okay to be a little crazy. Like, cosmetic occlusal connection. I mean, you put yourself out there that you could have been crucified for that title alone. And that was a very controversial title in 2005. It sounds crazy that it was, but it, it was. sounds crazy. Right. You know, and then you're like, well, I'm going to be a pilot. And I'm like, mm, okay. Yeah, I'm going to write a book. And I'm like, mm, okay. And then, you know, it's not important that you prove this to anybody else. It's the fact that you just, it's okay to set out crazy little goals that are just important to you. And when you get them done, it, it makes you feel like, hey, look, that yeah, was worthwhile. And, and, you know, like the book thing, it was, um, you know, you tell, I told the story from the podium a bunch of times and I saw it resonating with people. And again, the book came out of two things. One, Pete Dawson sort of challenged me on it. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is, and when you start thinking about, you know, what could make a big, what could make a difference? I saw the difference that this, my boy made in our lives and, and the number of people that it had touched just hearing the story. And so, you know, I, I, that, that had been a BHAG for like 10 years and I just kept chipping away at it and pushing it off. COVID is when I finished it. <clears throat> and I think I told you it's, it hit number five on the Amazon bestseller list in our yes. category in November, which is amazing, but it is, I mean, I'm touching all these people that outside of dentistry, like getting these emails and and things. And, you know, he got invited on to um, the voice of the Hokies, uh, read the book and invited him on his sideline. So he's on the sideline with all the Virginia Tech football players this fall. And it's, you know, they all read the book. It's just, it's, it's just crazy how a little thing starts in your head and, and you start chipping away at it. And, and again, it was a 10 year process. Um, that I was discouraged a lot of those years that I had written it down and I really didn't get much done on it other than just notes. Yeah. But now that in retrospect, what I realized was the book wasn't done yet. Like there was more to the story and I could tell that there was something that hadn't happened yet. And him reequating with his twin was kind of, a, once that happened, I just had this feeling like, this is what was, this is what I was waiting for. And yeah. so I look at that as the first chapter. Like it's now I'm just going to say this because if you go back and watch previous episodes and we're going to do a follow up on this and I actually want to get Cornell on here. Yeah. If you, if you haven't read it, so if you're listening on Spotify, just go, just flip up to the notes. You're going to see a link. It's called the Cornell effect. You can get it on Amazon, but uh, John, just talk about the book. I I'm just going to highly encourage you guys. If you guys haven't read it, it's a great gift. I gave it to my aunt. She doesn't know anything about this. She loved it. So like, uh, uh, just read it. Tell us a little bit about the book and, and what we should expect. Yeah, it's, you know, this is a, my. Uh oh, lost him again. Shoot.
Yo, yo. That Wi-Fi. Sorry, man. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, we, got a, we got a damn storm here, and I don't know why, if that's why. But yeah. anyway. Sorry, keep um, going. So I heard what you said, though. Okay. It's perfect. We'll stop to talk to you about the book. So, yeah, the story, it's our, it's our family story. Um, our, we have a, a, a son who's adopted, who's 29, African-American. He was born one pound, nine ounces, addicted to crack cocaine, um, was my wife's patient in the children's hospital. Uh, we were a young couple, couldn't get pregnant, and we, she sort of encouraged me to bring him home as a foster child. And, you know, we were told he'd never walk or talk or do much of anything. And it's just this unbelievable, uplifting story of this kid with this insatiable appetite to life that had several near-death experiences who just went, has gone through this pretty tough um, existence with just this incredible smile on his face and um, co very cognitively aware that he's on the other side of the bell curve, but just has accomplished all these things and, uh, you know, drives and has a job and does a lot of the digital design stuff, worked in lab, as a lab tech for five years. And so anyway, um, but it's, the story is really about the effect that he's had on us. And I can tell you for sure that the things we're talking about today, the BHAGs and, and that the energy of, of kind of going from an 85 percenter to a 95 percenter comes from this kid. He, he just kind of shamed me into it. And once I started to behave more like him and people say, well, you taught him to be like that. No, we didn't. He taught us to be like that. It's awesome. uh, but, but once we started to behave, once I started to behave more like that, um, I started to understand that there was some metrics to this and some structure to this and the stuff we're talking about today. And it's just worked beautifully, but yeah, the Cornell effect, it's a great read. And, um, it's, it's, again, it's been a, it's been a fun little journey, uh, doing all that. Yeah. It's, a, it's an extra special journey for a kid who didn't have much of a chance to survive and be on the sidelines with the Hokies talking to the coaching staff. And like, it's pretty amazing and a great example of a BHAG. Um, and then, uh, you know, any, any good thought, like let's, let's, uh, I want to just kind of give people a couple last thoughts on goals as they look forward to this year and next year and the year after John, help us see what, what a good process is or put, wrap this up in a bow for us. When we look forward, well, I think the biggest thing is is go as you think about your your BHAGs, think about it beyond just financial, right? right? So if you're attach, attaching a ten percent or eight percent or whatever your growth is going to be to your practice, what I want you to think about is what are you going to do better that's going to earn that. Like, what are you going to be doing? Don't think about it in the context of just doing more of it or just working harder. Right. Probably will work a little bit harder, but what are you, how are you going to be different as a dentist next year? And again, the, you know, a big part of what I'm doing now is, is helping dentists learn how to plan, you know, learn how to set back and, and make more complex treatment plans so that when they're sitting down to do dentistry, they're, they're doing more, you know, in the same amount of time rather than just chasing single teeth all over the place. And so, you know, I think that as a dentist, the more you can, you can focus your time on becoming a great diagnostician and then also looking for to put workflows into your practice that will allow you to see, so see the problems and see the solutions faster. That's what I'm helping dentists do now through digital workflows. Um, but however you choose to do that, do that. Right. Because again, wherever you are and however long you're practicing, um, you know, when you're sitting down to do the clinical part of dentistry, there's a speed that we're all going to work. But if you can learn to plan that better, you're always going to end up doing more dentistry in the same amount of time. Yeah. Um, I also say, you know, review your hours. You know, I've been a big fan of the 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 straight six or the straight eight of how you know I I sort of work seven to two. Uh, without lunch, um, you know, think about that too. That's a, it's a great thing if you've got a family. Uh, we get to choose our hours. I, I just think that, you know, if you can give the gift to yourself, your family, and your team and their families, that you can do the same or more dentistry in a shorter workday, 
it's just two o'clock in the afternoon in the summers. Are you kidding me? I mean, that's you can go yeah. play 18 holes before before dinner time. I so, know. you know, I, I just think that there's a lot of opportunity right now to sit back and look at this from a lot of different ways. But yeah. but the best way to think about this is to uh, set some of those BHAGs, float them around your head. And if you start getting a little but some butterflies in your stomach, that's probably a pretty good BHAG. If you're thinking about something that's just kind of dead, it's probably not a good one. Yeah, that's absolutely. Cool. I love this. And I would also say if you're a young dentist listening, listen. Being a dentist is hard. Being an entrepreneur is hard. Yeah. Don't try to do this on your own. And, uh, you know, some of you might be thinking, well, Kirk, you you had mentors. No, I went out and found them. And, John, you did. I would just say, hey, listen, you guys can do the same thing. And, John, you have an opportunity where people can get under your care. You can take a look at their stuff and give them feedback. It's a golden opportunity to get inside the mind of a master. So John, tell us a little bit about your study club. How does that work? What do you do? Yeah, so so the Cranham Clinical Coaching, I, I again, I started with about 20 docs. It went to about 35 over the last year. Um, and what we were basically doing is getting them on the Three Shape Lab software. And I created a, in Teachable a, a online subscription-based one-year course where they learned the software, learned how to mount cases, learn how to equilibrate, plan aesthetic cases, do wax ups, or, you know, working with laboratories to help them. And uh, during that time, I'd been working with Lee Kalp, who, and if those of you don't know, Lee is one of the best dental technicians on the planet and has a completely digital lab in Raleigh. And so this year we've, we've uh, created a new entity called Cranum Kalp Digital Dental, which is going to have the same coaching opportunity, the same subscription base. Uh, but we're going to have some digital immersion classes there that focus on aesthetics and wear and implants and all that as well. Um, so what I would just say is uh, I'm going to be um, coming back with Kirk on one of the uh, Friday uh, 90 minutes. Kirk, or, uh, Lee and I are going to come on and we'll probably sort of launch when it launches uh, yeah. first of the year. So we'll jump on in early January or end of January or something like that and, and do one of those spots if, if that's possible and uh, tell you more about it. But in the meantime, um, if you want to email me directly, uh, it's just smile doc without an E S M I L D O C. And just do just do the AOL smile doc at AOL.com. <laughs> it comes to me directly and no one sees. You it. know, I think you're the last person in all of dentistry that still has an AOL. I Does got it like four emails, but that's the one that dentists can get me at and I, right. I just think it's kind of retro now it's kind of cool it's gotten cool again now i love That's you dearly but does it say you've got mail i'll tell you <laughs> <laughs> i don't know so actually i think that stopped yeah. okay yeah and uh, i'm gonna volunteer you that you got to come here to milwaukee and show yeah. off this stuff and you know we may I, do it we may do a digital immersion thing let's here. do it that'd be great that'd be yeah. awesome man so Buddy, thank you so much for jumping in. And I, I'm just going to tell you, you know, the importance of sitting down every single year, creating a BHAG. And I know John well enough that if you reach out to him, he's going to reach back and give Absolutely. you some great perspective. And I'm just going to say this, even if he says one sentence or two sentences, it's worth gold and use it. So uh, thank you, brother, for being a great friend, great mentor of mine. And uh, make sure you check out the Cornell Effect. We're going to put links to all that stuff that he's mentioned in the show notes. So if you're driving, stop driving. Don't do this while you're driving. Flip up to the notes. You can click right on it. It'll take you right there. Um, keep sending us suggestions. You guys send a lot of great stuff about things that you want to see from either John or any other guest. We'll line them up for an amazing 2022. And most importantly... Just tell yourself, tell your family, your team, hey, next year is going to be the best year of our lives. Here's why. And you'll see its impact on everybody else. So thank you guys for listening. So until we see you next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.